For a brief moment in time, the GameCube was a major player in the power wars between the original Xbox and the PlayStation 2. The little purple lunchbox complete with a handle was more powerful than the PlayStation 2 and sat just behind the original Xbox and it promised a new era for Nintendo. Third parties would absolutely support this system now that Nintendo gave them a powerful system. We're all talking about that even today when it comes to the Switch and how people are complaining about it being underpowered. But I'm going to tell you why Nintendo went from competing with power to where they are now and how they've always been that company. Lateral thinking with Wither Technology was a statement put forward by Gunpei Yokoi, Nintendo's legendary hardware designer. In 1980, Sharp and Casio were in a fierce price war in order to compete for the personal computer market, and that led to an overcapacity situation of semiconductor and LCD production towards the whole Japanese market. However, Yokoi treated it as an opportunity and applied this cheap but mature microcomputing technology in developing portable game consoles, which not only effectively reduce the cost of production, but also ensures the stability of the product. This product development philosophy used by Nintendo is considered to be lateral thinking with withered technology. When it comes to product development, people are more likely to think of using the most advanced technologies to make the best products. Think of the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. However, there are too many risky unknowns in terms of creating state-of-the-art to attract consumers. Furthermore, companies also need to fight against their competitors within the market. If they don't have a 100% confidence applying the cutting edge technologies into their products and ensure a relatively reliable performance, developers need to spend more time and effort to revise the current version and fix the bugs. There is also great risk when launching such features. One such of the functions could not work well. It will significantly affect the user experience when people are enjoying their games. This can be seen as an irresponsible behavior of the company. But why does Nintendo use wither technology? Wither technology usually means mature technology. It is much easier for companies to create best-selling products by using mature technology, as this kind of technologies are abundant, well understood, and cheap. Mature technologies are often studied extensively by people, and it is easy to experiment with or make further innovations. Even if the technology might be obsolete, it is applicable as long as used appropriately. Take one of the most successful game consoles of Nintendo, the Wii, as an example. The main features of the Wii is the motion sensing capability, which enables players to manipulate items and interact with characters on the screen. However, in order to achieve such functionality, developers did not choose to use gyroscope, a relatively advanced technology, but turned to gravity sensor as well as infrared IR ray motion sensor bars. These technologies can definitely be treated as withered. However, Nintendo applied it very well, equipped their products with extraordinary SOMO to sensory features and made it as a revolutionary new console. Nintendo shifted their development strategy from chasing the technological trend to focusing on the creativity of the game. As most of the games created by Nintendo are simple, fun, it could capture the hearts of every individual in different age groups. From Nintendo's experience, we can find that limiting the company to withered technologies allows them to focus on more innovative aspects towards their products, which can be seen as a best practical approach to protect the brand value and win in a market. The reason I started this video with the GameCube is because it was Nintendo's answer to the power game. It was more powerful than the best-selling console of all time, the PlayStation 2, and yet it failed in that particular generation. It had games like this one, Resident Evil 4, which is about to get a remake, and nothing looked as good as Resident Evil 4 on the GameCube. It had many more games that completely blew away the PlayStation 2 when it came to graphics and power, and yet the PlayStation 2 managed to become the gamer's choice in that generation. So in shifting their focus away from power 
and just relying on their own creativity and their own brands and making sure that their IPs weren't diluted, they found a niche for themselves that has given them the success that they've had over the years. And using that lateral thinking with wither technology approach sometimes leads to great success like the Switch and sometimes leads to great failures like the Wii U. But in the end, Nintendo is always going to be a company based on creativity, fun, and innovation with their hardware rather than just raw specs on a sheet. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.